Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing the Dero Girls book tag, which was created by Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots. So if you don't know what Dairy Girls is, it's a sitcom set in Derry or London Derry during the time of the Troubles and it follows a group of teenage girls plus one English boy <laughs> and their sort of, I don't know, their activities, their lives during the Troubles. So without further ado, I will get straight into the tag. The first one is Erin, who is mostly our main character, and the prompt is a book that took you a while to warm up to. For me, I'm choosing Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and that's mostly because I actually found the first kind of half of this book really hard to get into, and I was kind of wondering what the hype was. Mexican Gothic is a horror, kind of. It's about Noemi, who gets a letter from her cousin who has just been married and is now living with her husband and his family in this manor house and she says that something bad is happening and that she needs her to come and save her. So Noemi goes to find out what's going on and she finds it really hard to get access to her cousin and to find out what's really going on in this house but something is definitely off. And the first kind of half is more of a uh, period drama piece I would guess and then you get to the horror thing. After the big reveal you find out what the big horror side is and that was when I really got into it. I much preferred the horror than I did the period drama. So yeah, that took me a while to get into. The next prompt is Michelle, a strong female character, and for me I'm going to be choosing Scarlet from Caraval, the first book in the Caraval trilogy, and that's mostly just because I thought she coped amazingly well considering she was originally kind of this like delicate flower kind of character who had to suddenly step up and try and save her sister. So Caraval is about two sisters who go to this thing called Caraval which happens every year and basically you always have to complete a competition and if you complete the competition you will win a prize. And this year the challenge is to find Teller who is Scarlet's sister before she dies and if you find her you get one wish from the magical creator of Caraval. But in Caraval nothing is what it seems and you have to remember that everything is part of a game so things can be traded for days of your life and drops of blood and things like that so it's really creative and I thought that Scarlet adapted amazingly well to this incredible world so I thought yeah I thought I thought Scarlet was a pretty good main character. I know a lot of people didn't like her and that's why a lot of people don't read the whole series but I really enjoyed Scarlet and how she dealt with everything. Next is Claire to pick an LGBT romance and I'm going to pick two here, one sapphic and one, what is the other word? I can't remember but a male male romance. So the male male one is Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is because I only read it recently and I know everyone else has read this and loved it and adores it but I only read it recently and I also loved it and adored it and I read it about a month ago and I already want to read it again. So yes, 10 out of 10, incredible book. This one is about two young men. One is the son of the President of the United States and the other one is the Prince of England. So they basically are frenemies. They have this rivalry against each other and they get caught in a sticky situation. So their PR teams decide that they need to pretend to be best friends for better PR basically. And as they start to pretend to be best friends, they start to fall for each other. So that is amazing. It's so funny. I absolutely adore it. And I'd highly recommend it for anyone who loves romance. And the female female romance I'm picking, it's not actually a romance book because I haven't really read many female female romance books specifically, but it's a fantasy book with a big female female romance component to it. And that is The Girls of Paper of Fire by Natasha Nyang. And oh, this book is just amazing. And it's about different casts of people and how if you're a full demon, you are the highest cast. And if you're a full human, you're the lowest cast. And sometimes full humans are sort of taken away to be concubines for the king, for the demon king. And that happens to our main character. She is taken because she has beautiful golden eyes. And it's kind of a story of what happens when she gets to know her fellow concubines in this like house that they live in to train together. And it's definitely a really incredible book and the female female romance in it is to die for. I loved it. It's one of the first female female romances I read that I really really enjoyed because I haven't read very many yet and it just mm, it was it was great. I love it and it was a really good slow burn and you could see it building. I just yeah I loved it so much. Next is Orla, a character with her head in the clouds and I have chosen Eve Brown from Actual Age Eve Brown and that's because 
As the book title suggests, she needs to start acting her age. Eve Brown is a chaotic mess who has never been able to follow a career, and so her parents basically tell her they're cutting her off until she finds one. So she drives off in a huff and finds this B&B and decides to walk into the interviews that are happening there. And somehow she manages to impress them, but not until after she's stormed out. So they go out into the rain to try and find her, and she doesn't see them looking for her and she accidentally runs over the owner of the b and and he breaks his arm. So <laughs> that is the chaotic story of Eve Brown and she kind of has her head in the clouds 24 seven. She's a very dreamy character who likes to sort of live in this positive bubble and is very like, I don't know, she's just a very head in the clouds kind of character but not in a ditzy kind of way but more in a positivity bubbly kind of way and I thought it was great. Next is James, a translated book, and I would like to talk about Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and that is because I read it recently and I absolutely adored it. This is an actually an own voices autistic book, but it's not said on paper, but it is just so, so good. Nothing much happens in this book, and I think that's what people find difficult to explain of what this book is about, but it's essentially about uh, a main character who has worked in this convenience store since she was 18 years old the day that the store opened and she's now 36 and she still works there. She absolutely loves this job, she loves the rhythm of it, she loves the predictability, she loves the routine but people are constantly questioning her and asking her why isn't she in a relationship, why hasn't she found a proper job and that's kind of the story of where this book goes, it explores those ideas of relationships and careers and those kind of things and futures and I thought it was amazing. It's translated from Japanese, it's set in Japan and I just, I love it so much. It's a really short read so if you're interested it's definitely worth a shot. Next we have Sister Michael which is a book you studied at school. Sister Michael is probably one of my favourite characters so I'm excited for this one. The book that I wanted to talk about is Lord of the Flies. I did read loads of other books but that's the one that stuck out to me the most because it's the main book I studied for my GCSEs and Lord of the Flies is about a group of schoolboys whose plane crash lands on this island and they have to kind of survive until they can be rescued and it's about the divides that form and what happens when there's no governance around young boys. I really enjoyed it, I thought it was a very interesting story and I thought the progression was very interesting and the characterization. I thought it was a little bit slap in the face level of symbolism, you know, like the metaphors and symbolism was very very in your face and obvious but in the same way I don't think it ruined the reading experience and I think if I hadn't had to analyse it as heavily as I had I still would have enjoyed it as a normal read. Next one is Ma Mary and Da Jerry your, one of your favourite bookish parents. And for this one, I'm picking The Dad from Illumine, which is uh, Katie Grant's dad, Mr. Grant. I can't remember his first name, but I just, yeah, I, I, I loved him. I thought he was a really pure and innocent character. And I loved the ending that he got. I'm not gonna spoil anything for anyone that wants to read the Illumine Files series, but I thought he was just the purest and the sweetest, and I loved him. Next is Jenny Joyce, your favourite bookish clever clogs, and I'm choosing Cade from the Wayward Children series. He is the character that lives up in the attic and he makes helps to make the clothes for people who come back from their worlds. So if you don't know what Wayward Children series is, it's about these children who find doors to their perfect world and then eventually they are forced to come back to our world and they go to this school together where they try to learn to accept their lives in the current world but the school that this one is focused on is the schools where the children want to go back. So some of them are waiting and hoping that door will open again one day. Others are trying to adapt to life and accepting that they're not going to be going back. And Cade came back from his and he knows he's never going to be going back because he was expelled because they found out that he was transgender and they wanted a princess, not a prince. So Cade lives up in the attic. He helps to document all the other children's worlds and helps them to get some clothes that they feel comfortable in. So yeah, I think Cade is a really lovable Clever Clogs character and I just, uh, I hope he gets his own book soon. Next is a book with a pretty colour and I'm going to go and get my pick so I can show you. I'm choosing The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. So I'm going to give you a close up of the book now. So I think this is just absolutely beautiful and I love it so so much. It carries on around the side and it's still kind of pretty at the back. So yeah, I think it's a really beautiful book. I haven't read it yet, but it's really high up on my TBR because I've been so hyped for this one for so long. And finally, we have Uncle Colm, a book that you can't stop talking about. And there are so many I could list right now 
from The Girls I've Been, The Way with Children series, Actual Age Eve Brown. There's just so many. Convenience Store Woman, I love that one. There's just, oh, I could I could be here all day. I think any book I end up giving a solid five stars, I just want to talk about it 24 seven. So yeah, there, there's loads. And if you ever need a book recommendation, come to me and I will try my best to come up with one for you. So I want to say thank you so much to Aoife for making this tag. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's really encouraged me to actually go and rewatch Dairy Girls, which has been a great experience. I have missed that show. So thank you so much for that. If you want to take part in this tag, please feel free to say that I tagged you because I will happily take you under my wing and say I did. I'm not going to tag anyone specifically because I don't really know who watches the Dairy Girls. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. If you want to leave me a comment to let me know you are here, leave me the clover emoji down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.